Hi, I'm Seb and I make stuff. And this week I'm gonna be making a little crystal display with a magical burst of nature. So I picked a couple of these up from Kmart for a couple of dollars each and they are perfect for a display piece. So I've decided to build a little glowing crystal that you can throw down as a display piece in your cabinet of curiosities. Since I'm planning to display this in one of these jars, I'm gonna have to measure up this diameter to make sure that everything fits and then design myself a 3D model. I built this on Tinkercad and made sure to remove enough space so that a tea light candle could comfortably fit in the hole underneath. Once this was done, I threw it onto my 3D printer and got a few printed out and ready to go. And now for a quick dry fit of everything. First off, the tea light candle slides in there nicely and the whole thing fits perfectly onto my display jar. And lights on, beautiful. So I did a quick test of an old crystal that I had, but this guy was a little bit too big. So it was time to jump over to Thingiverse, download a couple of different variations of crystal models, size these down to be a bit more appropriate for my jar, and print them out in transparent resin on my Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. And once they're cleaned up, they work perfectly to catch the light. So adding a little tea light candle underneath just really makes them pop. This will work perfectly as a centerpiece to our display. And now to build up some earth around the base. We're going to be using a modeling compound. I showed you guys how to make this stuff in a previous video. Once you have the base, you just mix in some water and some glue. Mix this up thoroughly and you'll get a, about a 10 to 20 minute work time and a, about 24 hours before the full dry. I just start scooping this out and piling it around the edges of my little display base. I really want to add a nice random earthy shape, so I pile this up as heavily as I can and then I pull out some plaster rock molds that I prepared the night before. I'm just using plaster of Paris in these Woodland Scenics rock molds. You could just put this into some crunched up foil and you'd get a decent effect, but since I have these, I may as well use them as they give me a really nice finished rock texture result and they take the inks that I'm going to use really nicely. So I just start breaking up the smaller parts of these that I like and pressing them into the modeling compound. You can just snap the models and press them up against one another, allowing the modeling compound to squeeze into the gaps. I also take this opportunity to squeeze a few roots into the modeling compound. Putting a little bit more of this natural variation in the base will help later on, even though a lot of it will get covered up. We are just going to add little rocks and then sprinkles of dirt and sand, making for a nice natural variation to our base. At this point, I decide to add in a tree root as our first big major piece of nature on this display. Before finally cleaning up the edges of the sculptor mold as it starts to dry. And then giving this 24 hours in the sun. And once that's dry, we can mix up some watered down acrylic brown paint and just douse this over the entire model. Again, giving this time to dry as this is a fairly watery ink mix. That first layer soaks in beautifully, and now it's time to come in with a Tamiya Earth Effects soil to give us a drier layer of soil over the top. So in some areas I really pile this on, but mostly just dry brushing it over the higher areas to give us some layering. And now to paint the rocks, we're going to be using Contrast Space Wolves Grey. Straight out of the pot, this will look way too bright and glossy. But don't worry, this contrast paint tends to dry far more matte than it looks wet and I really like this look for a stone finish. Now it's time to move on to the next layer of our display piece. This crystal looks perfect in place, but we need to add some greenery. So we put something down to catch anything that falls off and start dousing all of the areas that we want some mossy growth in a matte Mod Podge. 
then just pouring out some small flock over everywhere that we put down the glue. I use a darker base and then start adding in some brighter elements and different levels of thickness to add a bit more natural variation. Also trying to keep the brighter stuff on the higher layers to give us an idea of highlights and shadows. And once I'm happy with the amount of greenery, it's time to paint up the crystal. I chose to use Soulstone Blue. This looks great when the lights are off, but it doesn't really complement the orange light that comes from the tea light candle underneath. So I might need to find a white light to place underneath this build. I also came in after the fact and added in some blue inks to help highlight the crystal edges. And then I glued it down to the display base. And now for my favorite part, adding in all the little extra details. We throw down some mushrooms, some life in the form of snails, and then just some more variation, as much or as little as you want for your display piece. And since it's me, I'm going to go way overboard on this. All right, and I think that might be enough but we need to fix that gap. So we just pile on some PVA glue, spread it around to make sure it's evenly matched and kind of dispersed evenly throughout. Also using this to fill in any gaps and pouring some more flocking over all of this. Then sprinkling some small rocks and sand over this as well to fill in any gaps where the glue is still showing and give us a more natural variation to the base. I'm giving a little bit of shade to this guy and starting to add in the grass tufts. That's right, there's more greenery going onto this build. You didn't think I was done yet, did you? Adding a few variations of nice green tufts and then pulling out some flowers to get as much color as possible onto this build. The idea being that this is some kind of druidic crystal, causing a magical explosion of nature everywhere around it, even in this small lump of dirt and rock that's hidden away in a display jar on someone's shelf. And it wouldn't be one of my builds without a frog. So I painted up this guy with some wild colors to match the craziness of this nice little display piece and glued him down. He needed a little bit more support under his foot here. So with a little bit of gel super glue and a tiny stone, everything was in place. We just had to give a quick stain to the wooden bases of these display jars to help bring them into a darker fantasy style display piece. These jars work perfectly to protect these kinds of models and keep all of the dust off of them on a display. And it just looks cool. But for now, let's take a closer look at the model itself. And I've got myself an awesome little crystal display. These jars came out brilliantly and I love the way that the whole thing comes together. It really gives me the idea that the crystal is creating this explosion of life that is just being held within this little barrier of a glass jar. I'm putting the design for the base piece that the tea light candles can fit into up on Thingiverse for free and I'd love to see what you guys can do with it. I've used this for a couple of other displays which you'll see in videos in the coming weeks. Here's a little example of what you'll see next week. And until then, never stop making stuff. <laughs>